What's up, y'all? Welcome back. I know it has been a while. I feel like every time I say that, I just want to hear the piano start from Welcome Back, Cotter. It's high and hungry, and I know that you're like, yo, why is it not on the Be Real TV channel? Because this is one of my solo episodes that you are checking out on the We Don't Smoke the Same podcast channel. So make sure you're already subscribed. Hit that share button because you're going to be getting exclusive bonus episodes on this channel, aside from all the other stuff that we do. So why not stick around for the fun? But I'm actually doing something different today, man. I feel like... C minus told me this one time. That was a big coffee drinker. That was like, we, I think we, him and him and Jason Rouse told me. I remember it was I was waking up. We were out of town at a gig or something like that, and he and I was just drinking espressos, and I started smoking and taking dabs right after. And he was like, "Ah, poor man, speedball, right?" And ever since he told me that, I had drank coffee before, but I was like, "Yo, this shit is kind of like a drug." You know what I mean? It has an effect on people, but. I wouldn't say I'm one of those people that I gotta have it all the time. However, I know that there's a lot of you motherfuckers that watch High and Hungry that definitely wake and bake. And a lot of you, uh, you know, nine to fibers out there or they just have a busy career, you know, and you definitely depend on this. So this is the first ever High and Hungry coffee episode. That's right. We're going to be trying some different coffees. And I'm over here at El Cielito Cafe, uh, Latin old business in the heart of Southgate. I'm talking about right in the heart. Uh, on the fucking street, you see the you see the welcome to Southgate sign. You know, like you see it in Las Vegas, but it's very small because it's Southgate. You know, <laughs> like, like all the other cities, we have ten thousand cities, so we all get a little sign. It says the population. It's right there on that block. This area is very rich in Latino culture. There's a lot of like you can find a variety of different la, different tamaleras. You can find a lot of different pupusa, pupusa ladies or little taco stands everywhere day and night, and you could also find a variety of different restaurants. That's why, like, you could always find a gem like this. And I can imagine, as busy as some of you motherfuckers uh, see a Starbucks, you guys are still willing to pay $6 for a cup of fucking shit. <laughs> I'm sorry to talk shit about it, but it's like, you guys, compared to the stuff that we're going to try today, you guys are going to feel like you guys are getting, getting ripped off. The, way I, the reason I say that is because we try to highlight the places that put that heart, that put that missing piece into uh, what makes a meal complete. Because like I said, having a hot, we were just having a conversation about this before. Having a stoner's taste palette, it like builds up some endurance, bro. Like you can't fake the funk. Like I'm going to learn how to differentiate the difference between booth coffee. Yeah, there is such a thing as booth coffee out there. Somebody could go ahead and tell you about some bad coffee that's not, not necessarily not good for you, but lower quality. You wouldn't smoke stress. So you, yeah, so you wouldn't fucking drink it. Hey, Michael McDonald made a song like that. So don't even, I'm definitely going to be eating something after this. But guess what? This is the first High and Hungry Coffee episode. And I hope that you motherfuckers that watch this episode and you're around this area, which I know a lot of you guys are. You can't lie to me. It's very expensive to live in L.A. So I know where everybody who's on a budget like myself stays at it. <laughs> I was like, so I definitely want to invite you guys to come down. And like, I'm going to just tell you guys right now and I remind you at the end. If I get 10 people from this video to come over here, fucking send it to the High and Hungry TV. Take a picture of them coming in here and saying, hey, I checked this out because I'm High and Hungry. I will be sending you something in the mail like I always do. But this time, it's going to be on the house. So make sure, just, uh, you know, just to make sure you guys support. So make sure you guys check them out. It's a, a Cielito Coffee. I'm going to go ahead and bring out one of the guys. I got two guys. I got the guy who imports it, and I got the guy who has the shop right here together. And they work together. I'm actually going to try El Salvadorian coffee or, or Cafe Salvadoreño. Why do I got to say it like I fucking live in Montebello? It's Cafe Salvadoreño that I'm going to be trying. I just don't have that crazy accent that you see on Channel 28 on the weekends. You know what I mean? I don't want to say it's an appetite today. It's definitely something balanced me out because this shit smells fucking strong. It's grinded up. I got this fucking kettle. It's, I mean, it shit looks fancy as fuck. This shit looks like the one in Snow White. <laughs> you know what I mean? The one that fucking, or the one the little teapot. We're going to do some science, so let's go ahead and bring out, bring out the guys. Make sure you hit that thumbs up. I hope you're drinking coffee. Let us know what kind of coffee you like. Is there a gem? Is there something? Is there a coffee that I should know about? What's the ultimate coffee? Comment it down, down below in the comments. What better insight can I bring you than actually having the owner himself of El Celito Coffee, El Celito Cafe, and I just, you know, the whole, well, your logo, bro, is uh, all of South America, pretty yeah. much, Central and South America. All it's, Latin America. Bro. Yeah, fools getting offended, they're like, hey, fool, don't forget about us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, bro. Yeah, yeah, bro, but all of Latin America, 
I'm here with Danny. You guys will see him here. Uh, this man, this man will go ahead and make your coffee. He was roasting coffees last night. He was roasting coffee beans last night. It's some machine I've never seen. My grandma probably knows that shit. <laughs> She's like 96. She used to do this coffee work in El Salvador back in the day. But this was really out here grinding. And that is one of the most respectable things that you could do whenever you have a business. You put your heart into it or, or, or any restaurant because any restaurant or any anything that people can consume. Especially something like coffee where they start their day off like it. And it's like the first thing they become in contact with or that they drink. To bring them up, you want that to be a pleasant experience. It's like you showing up laughing before work. Yeah, and it's dope that you, you know, like I can see you, like you know your way around everywhere as you should. But are you like on a busy day or something like that? I can see you like I used to still like cocina. You know what I mean? Hell yeah, bro. Yeah, yeah. I mean I'm, I'm Mexican, bro. All I know is to do is to work, bro. Hell yeah, you know. Man. But um, but yeah, man. Just saying, I'm here in the in the making drinks. I'm there roasting, bro. I slept three hours last night. Um, whenever an account comes through, I go, I talk to them and say, Hey, let me give you the best coffee possible. Um, I make the deals directly. So with the different, what do you, what do you mean by that? Like that, like you, you just don't sell coffee like to people here. Like if yeah. there's a shop out there watching, you could sell them cafe. Yeah. So we have wholesale accounts. So we sell a couple, um, we sell to bakeries too. Um, oh, sure. Yeah. We really, we really want to get the coffee pushed out there. So not only does it help us, but it helps our homies that import the coffees yeah. and the farmers that are back there, bro, because the money goes straight to them. All these four coffees we're going to try, they're exclusively available to you guys? Exactly. Yeah. So the, the thing that we really broke ground with and the thing that we made fucking headlines and everyone go crazy was that we deal directly with the farmers. So everyone else just goes to an importer. Importers got like a warehouse full of coffee. And you say, give me this, give me a Guatemala, whatever. But with me, what we ended up doing was that we actually know the farmers and we know the business partners of the yeah. farmers. So uh, with Kenny uh, that we have here, um, we talked and we're just like, hey, bro, um, we need the coffee imported from where you have it. And he's like, yeah, bro, we'll make the deal directly with the farmers. The money goes straight to them. So it's like, so it's like, of- it's like kind of like when you go to the farmer's market. Exactly, bro. Yeah. yeah. No. And you know damn well, everybody that doesn't go there, a lot of you fools, I understand. The reason you guys say it, you guys will hate on it and be like, fuck that. If you fools would be hella picky about your drugs the same way you are with your farmer's market and coffee, man, the world would be a lot healthier. And some of you fools will be out there living it up. I'm telling you, man, uh, this is where you want to be because do you think coffee's addicting, see or no? Yeah, bro. Yeah? Okay. See, yeah. There you go, bro. <laughs> that's, that's coming from somebody keeping it real and that works in this industry. If you're going to be hooked on something, and obviously nobody's out there sucking dick for fucking coffee, but you know what I'm saying? Like, if you're going to be hooked on something, you want to make sure that you do your research on that shit, man. Honestly, I, I ain't going to lie, bro. Like, when I drink coffee, like, and I know I need to drink it a lot, me agarra por tomar, like, fuck, como si fuera cerveza. Like, just, I, another one after another one, fool, it gets to the point where I'm like, man, this is going to be a funky, smelly piss. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, like, bro. Yeah, and I always think, I was like, hey, this shit's not supposed to be like that. I'm, how do I know it's not just the cheap coffee I'm drinking that makes this shit smell like asparagus piss? <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, so it's, it's certain different things, right? There's a lot of factors of coffee. There's a shitload of science to it, bro. But, like, just for, like, the layman's terms, like, don't get ground coffee from the store. Because ground coffee, once you grind it, it only lasts an hour, bro. Other than really? that, the flavor's fucked, the coffee's fucked, you're just drinking fucking ground water at that point. You wouldn't want to be smoking oxidized weed that's going to leave yellow smoke in your bong or that's going to be all like fucking discolored. You want the good shit. An hour life expand? Yeah, it's only an hour when you grind it, bro. So, yeah. what are you, so are you supposed to wait? You're supposed to have the beans, the frijoles? You're supposed to have these like, how, like when, do you, when is the right time? So you get them whole beans. So when they're whole beans, um, if it's a whole bean medium roast, it'll last you three months. So what we recommend is to get your own grinder. So that way, right when you're going to make your coffee, you grind it and it stays fresh. Can you use a wheat grinder? <laughs> I don't know. I never, maybe. Bro, maybe. <laughs> I never really thought of that shit. <laughs> I mean, because I've, I've used a coffee grinder for wheat. So yeah. I just, yeah, like. Yeah, well, low-key, yeah, because there's hand grinders. So it probably works yeah. the same way, bro. Yeah. I've used that shit before. For those of you guys that don't know, if you guys smoke crazy, Keep it high and hungry or, or do it the same way we do at B-Real TV. You can buy a fucking uh, coffee grinder and just put like an eighth in there and push it. And the shit would just empty it out, bro. <laughs> that shit, bro. Yeah, That's just, sick as fuck, bro. Yeah, the, the, yeah. So these are the Guatemalas. They're a lighter roast. And then those are the El Salvador, which are a darker roast. Um, these are all like super crazy process. So <laughs> it's super sweet. Um, we can smell it already. It's got like kind of like a chocolatey smell to it. Um... They're really top-notch shit, bro. Like, they were just imported maybe shit like this month or last month. Okay. And they were roasted last night, bro. So What do you mean by roasted? So, basically, when the coffee, it's a seed, bro. It's, yeah. it's, a, it's a seed from a cherry. 
And so when you roast it, it's kind of like when you make popcorn. Yeah. You um apply this heat to it, and that heat allows the coffee to cook. And when it cooks, it pops just like popcorn, and it looks like the coffee bean that everyone knows and loves. But when you see it, like if you check out our Instagram, it's just like a little green seed, yeah. bro. So like edit mommy kind of. Exactly. So yeah. what we try to do is we try um basically applying like recipes, bro. Yeah. Just cooking it, different formulas, different numbers. And that's the kind of style that we want to bring out of it and different tastes and flavor notes. A lot of you fools out there, your, your parents, Cafe Stantanio. You know what I mean? Bro, yeah, like, bro. Cafe de Oya. Bro, like, for <laughs> real, bro. Like, they, they had process for this shit, bro. Yeah. And, and then, yo, the Guatemala was like hella lighter. Yeah. And so that's the difference you want to get, bro. So also look out in the stores. So general, the general rule of thumb is that the lighter the roast is, the more caffeine that coffee's got. The darker the roast, the less caffeine that's got. And it also has less flavor if it's darker roast, bro. The analogy I like to use is like cooking steak, right? right? If you have a really bomb ass fucking steak, you're gonna cook it medium rare because you wanna get some of the flavors out. You don't want it tasting like fucking just charcoal, yeah. bro. But if you have shitty coffee, like, you know, Starbucks and yeah. shit like that, they burn that shit so you just taste smoky and you're like, all right, I'm tasting coffee. A lot of you people that have been going to like dispensaries or used to go back uh, or used to go to the back in the day like I did, uh, they always had coffee right next to the bud, fool. Yeah. Like, is there, like, what is that? Like, is, is it true that the reason for that is so it kills the palate of the whatever weed you got in there? It's so strong that yeah. you're able to reset your palate or do you know? Yeah, so there's a lot of reasons, bro. Like, coffee and, and weed go hand in hand, bro. There's actually... Way I, to make. Yeah. <laughs> I think it's like, I think it, there was like some science, like if you drink 12 straight cups of coffee, you get the same effects on the brain as marijuana. It's really trippy though, because... With us, our shit is sparkling water. So sparkling water cleans our palate before we taste the different coffees, bro. Really? Yeah, it's trippy. So it cleans your palate and your nose and your fucking tongue. If you guys didn't catch that, it helped me understand, be real a little bit more. Coffee, huh? Drinks about 12 espressos a day. He's just adding to his high. You see you, bro? <laughs> you're gonna get your spoon. So basically what you're gonna do, you're gonna hold your nose close to this shit. You're gonna push back and just smell, bro. No, wow. this shit is fucking crazy how, like, detailed, like, it, it's like smelling a nug. They tell you, it's like, hey, this shit smells like strawberry banana. It just... Yo, that, I never thought that coffee could be like that. That is wild, bro, the way it could just smell like that. It's like uncovering, like, a layer of a cake almost. It's... This, this smells really fucking good. At, fir it, at first it didn't smell like that, but now it smells like you get the abundance of aroma. That one's like a little bit more subtle. Yeah, man. Yeah. It's like coffee terps. For everybody out there really at wondering, these are literal coffee terps. Terpenes and coffee. When we're tasting coffee, it's kind of, it's crazy. You kind of have to you have to do it like uh like you're doing wine tasting in a sense, man. Because there's so much terps in every coffee, and you wouldn't be able to distinguish these actual terpenes or this actual taste if it wasn't for this process. So you're supposed to just put a little bit in there, sip that a little bit or slurp it. The Salvadorian coffee right off the bat is very bold. It's like a lot. It's what you envision a dark coffee, kind of, but the aftertaste is wild. It kind of has a little dark chocolate taste to it. I also am joined by Kenny, who's uh, an actual coffee importer. That's right. And uh, I mean, shit. Did you import all these coffees that are here? Uh, well, two out of the four that you that you tasted, yeah, they're mine. Um, one of them being from my family, my own family's farm. And yeah, you have family from, out there? Can you get us a cafe? Yeah, it, it, I'm telling you, it's literally on vacation one time, and I never visited that that part of the family, and they live in the countryside, in uh, a public coffee, Hannes, the region of Hannes, and uh, they're a coffee producer region, which yeah. is not so many people have heard about. And yeah, man, just kind of like ask questions, where's this going, how much I'll get paid for this, uh, and now we're importing it, paying them better. Damn, that's that's crazy, man. So, so from something being like a family thing, 
to you actually being the guy who imports it. Because when I picture coffee importing, like I'm thinking of going out there talking to like the fucking the 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 Pablo's of fucking cafe, dog. I'd be like, ¿cuánto quieres por 25 bolsas de café? It's kind of like that, man. You literally, it's it's an old way of doing business when you go out there and talk to these people. You realize it real quick. If, if, if you have family that kind of taught you the old respect, the uh, type of way to treat your elders and all that, you're fine. You know, because they read that. They read, how are you coming at me? Or you yeah. come at me like just some poor dude that's trying to take advantage of me. Tiene la persona. Exactly. It's just luckily my family is uh, one of the, I guess, more well-known families there. And uh, yeah, they... they my, my own family, like I said, they had never met me. So they hadn't entrusted me. Yeah. With that trust, others followed me. So two out of the four coffees, which yeah. one did you import? The Guatemala one? Yeah, the Guatemalan one for Brejanes. It's uh first time we do a process called anaerobic, which is kind of yeah. chippy. Uh, you uh, bag it up, suck out all the oxygen, and just kind of let them uh, ferment for an extra few days. Anaerobic? Yeah. Damn, man. That's, I didn't know coffee was that complex, man. Now I understand why, like... There's, they now I understand why there's such a crazy big demand. I mean, I've always understood it, the caffeine part in a sense, but it's crazy like how you have like, all, there's craft coffee out there pretty much. And this is like how I drink craft beer, there's craft coffee. The verdict for uh, these two Salvadoran ones, I would definitely fuck with them. I would probably fuck with this one way more than that one. I felt like this one had more of a chocolate kind of taste or finish. And now this was the lighter one, and you said the lighter ones have more caffeine. Yeah, that's what that's what Danny was telling you. Um, you burn off less of the caffeine. Um, for the purpose of tasting this, is why we went a little lighter on the roast. Because uh, there's a certain type of roast you're supposed to put on it when you cup it, and it just kind of gives you a baseline of what it is. You know what I mean? And uh, the ones you're tasting over there are basically shop. He uses those in the shop every day, which give you a more bolder, uh, fuller cup. You know what I mean? This is more like. The lighter, the lighter notes, the more refined notes. This got literally plucked from the tree and it got washed off. Yeah. Um, they selected the, the cherries, they put them in these bags, and they just let it ferment for an extra few days. That's why you get the natural flavors from that, because you get more of that cherry, the sugars from the cherry stayed with the bean, you know what I mean? So all yeah. that just kind of, it's, it's like you said, one. You know, yeah. You ferment grapes, you ferment coffee beans too, in a way. You know? So it's kind of like a mushroom tech. Something like that, man. Yeah. Yeah, because you gotta let the mushrooms ferment, grow yeah. out. <laughs> you know. Pass me the last one. Yeah. Controlled environment. So this one, it came from a little higher lot, and that bean has a different characteristic. It takes a little longer to roast, um, so you'll you'll get a little bit, I guess you could say, less of a of a, of a bolder bolder taste from that. What's the longest like a bean takes? To what? To roast. Well, like it to depends brew. on you. Uh, depends on what kind of roast you want. You want a darker roast is going to take longer. Uh, lighter roast, obviously, but it's somewhere between ten and fourteen minutes tops. Like if you really trying to go dark, it depends on how you're increasing your temperature along the roast. This. Okay, so it's, it's pretty much depending on the cook. Yeah, on the cook. That's what Danny comes in. Danny has his own style. Tech. Yeah. So you're gonna get more chocolate and like those notes that yeah. our old, uh, like our old ancestors, like they, they're used to. And this one's a little bit sweeter, a little bit like you said, bolder, just from the varietal. But these two right here, yeah. from uh, the high and hungry perspective and the recommendation, I fuck with these two right here. Like, honestly, like I really fuck with these two right here, and uh, I would drink these. They, I mean, just just sipping it right now got me a little bit lit. Like I'm just like, oh shit! Like this is, I can see I you start the morning off with this. Definitely followed by followed by another joint, man. But all right, so you're the importer, dog. Yeah. And uh, all these coffees could be available here. I mean, so are you the guy who supplies a lot of stores? So I have a few customers. Yeah, man, scattered through the city. Uh, Cypress Park. Um, Danny here was my first one, though, man. He was the first dude that gave me the chance uh, to have our coffees represented uh, yeah. in the shop. But yeah, definitely uh, different shops around the around the city. If you follow me uh, on my Instagram. Yeah, at Cafe Orgullo, Cafe Orgullo Celeste uh, on Instagram. Um, you always get to see everything I do from the day to day, who carries my coffees and all that. Yeah, a little bit of our story on there too. For real coffee and uh, enthusiasts and craft, con I mean, uh, craft coffee connoisseurs, is it necessary to push it in the coffee? Like sometimes, oh, those uh, those uh, cucharadas de azúcar, crema, okay, it's all costumbre. La costumbre de uno basically dictates. So costumbre is like habit, right? Yeah, it's a habit. It's a habit. However you're used to drinking it, um, me, myself, 
Uh, I like that craft beer, so yeah. I take it basically black. If anything, a little bit of milk yeah. in the morning time, but usually just straight black. And I want to taste, I want to taste that that boldness. Like so, know. those drinks that you see with the crazy pumpkins yeah. and fucking uh, extra latte caramel, it's, it's fucking it's my for look. It's preference, man. Like it gives you the kick. Yeah, but it's more like a sugar rush. Yeah. yeah, like it's yeah. just like hey. I, this is my fancy way of drinking a cup of sugar. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> basically, man, like it's a uh, caffeine milkshake. Oh, you know okay. I mean? damn. Yeah, 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 okay, yeah, yeah. that makes sense. Cause you know what I mean, the milkshake I mean, with I, caffeine in it. I mean, don't get me wrong. I like a frap every now and then, yeah. but fuck, man. For me to say, yeah, it's because I need the caffeine, nah, fool. Like you don't need the diabetes. Now, this place is open. How many days a week? Daddy, seven days a week, right? Seven days a week, bro. Six a.m. to four thirty. Six a.m. to four thirty. Seven days a week. I'm definitely very caffeinated right now. Uh, I definitely got to go back to doing the high part because I'm definitely hungry. <laughs> but this was a, the, like she might have told me uh, when, when he mentioned that comment before, it's kind of like the perfect speedball without running the chance of dying. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's the right medium, man. I feel, I'm like, hey, I got a list of shit to do, but I know I'm going to get tired later. Especially for the morning, the morning tokers. I mean, if you don't want to get too too lit, too lit, this is the perfect thing to just keep you right in the middle. Man. That's what I would do when I would sell cars back in the day. I would fucking go buy the strongest coffee and I'll fucking smoke on the way to work and drink it. And I'll be like, they won't know. But I fucking stunk, bro. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you guys can check out uh, El Cielito Coffee on Instagram. El Cielito Coffee? El Cielito Cafe. El Cielito Cafe on Instagram. But you can come get some El Cielito Coffee here. A lot of this, like their slogan says, it's culture in every cup. I now know the difference. I want to take some of this Salvadorian one home so I can get my whole family lit. <laughs> you know what I mean? Be like, hey, I'll go, I'll go to La Patria. <laughs> but uh, yeah, what's your Instagram once again? At Café Orgullo Celeste. Y el tuyo? El Cielito Café. El Cielito Café. Uh, ours is High and Hungry TV. You can go uh, check out our merch at highandhungry.shop. Uh, there's a lot of new stuff up there. Once again, the first 10 people that come up in here uh, after seeing this episode and say, hey, I saw you guys are high and hungry. Just take a quick picture in front of the one of those two uh, paintings in the wall or something like that, or even tag the picture of the coffee cup. I'll be sending you a little thank you, and I'm going to be trying to do that with a lot of the spots we feature from now on, at least on this channel. So make sure you guys uh, hit that thumbs up. Uh, drop that comment. Once again, what's your favorite coffee that you like now and maybe... You could change your mind after this. And if they want to get some of this coffee and they're not in California, what can they do? Um, well, as far as mine goes, uh, the e-commerce website will be up and running about next week. Okay. Uh, with Danny, same thing with him. He's up He's up and running. You can go to EsitoCafe.com. Uh, oh, they got the right. shop. Link in the bio. Yeah. Yep. yep. So make sure you guys check that out. And I'll see you guys in a bit.